Well, sports are basically a proxy of war, right? It's right. C- it's kind of like it's a it's like fake war. Yeah, it's like in a replacement. Yeah, it's like a replacement of yeah. war. Yeah, it's like when when the Raiders are gonna f- play the <laughs> Dolphins. <laughs> yeah. It's basically now it's Vegas, right? Right. Vegas, right. It's yeah. basically. F- Florida is going to war with Las Vegas. Right, exactly. And we get it out of our system on in in an yeah. hour and a half. You know, that's what it was invented for. That's what football was actually invented for. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Th- th- there was an article I read about, I think we might have even talked about it on the podcast at one point in time, about how football was invented um, to be, uh, like, uh, to give people something to do that was like a replacement for war. Right. When there wasn't, when they were in between, when there was no war to fight. Yeah, and in the beginning of it, it a lot of it was like Native Americans playing. Uh, like some of the best early players were Native Americans. Right. Yeah, I was reading this this whole thing about the history of football. I mm-hmm. wish I could remember more details, but again, I don't really follow football either. So I yeah, just casually was glancing at this article and then I gave up on it. Yeah, but when you see how people are so passion and mm-hmm. passionate by it, it's like, well. Would, would Cleveland be marching on on Pittsburgh if they didn't have the Browns and the Steelers? Like, would all these young men be just? I think you need right? to give people things like that to do. Yeah, I, I think legitimately, when you get an enormous mass of people like the yeah. United States is, United States is three hundred and whatever million Huge. people. You, they need some things that they can root on. Yeah, they root for, and they need some things that are like very important and serious to them. Yeah. It takes you out of your every day. Yeah. It takes all that aggression and puts it towards something. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Were you ever a hockey fan? No. I was a hockey fan for a while. And then, what happened? They did you wrong? Yeah, they just went into... I was with the Rangers like as a kid, and then they won the cup, and it was like this huge thing. And then for the next like decade... They were just so bad. It was just like I. So you're a fair weather fan? Is that what you're trying to say? It was pretty fair. They, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just show up when they won the cup, but I, I, I bailed at a certain point. Well, when I, you know, that one day that I went to see the Red Sox game, that yeah. I got into Taekwondo. From that day on, all I really cared about was martial arts, mm-hmm. combat sports. That's yeah. really all I was interested in. I was always interested in boxing. I always was a big boxing fan. Right. But then I got really into martial arts, and that that became my obsession. So I right. I didn't watch any sports after that. Right. No, you were doing it. You were yeah. participating. But it's also like the stuff that I watched. I'd only watch combat sports. I'd watch boxing or kickboxing. Right. Or, there was no MMA at the time. And no YouTube, by the way. Yeah, nothing. But I would get VHS tapes. <laughs> right. You get VHS tapes back when the VHS came out. Yeah. And I would record, like, say, if Marvin Hagler was fighting on HBO, oh, I'd man. record it and, and watch it later. Play God, it back. good. Oh, my God. Oh, my amazing. God. Did you find anything on uh, the origins of football? Oh. Uh, I remember t- there's, I think there's two different stories there that you, there's definitely a story about the Native American roots and football i know yeah because there was some it's like how jim thorpe got involved oh right right Right. you see the picture of jim thorpe when he's running in the olympics no and he had uh one shoe that was uh a shoe that he found and it didn't fit him right so he had to put like two socks on like (laughs) yeah and he won and he won won the gold medal oh my god like fucked up shoes (laughs) And they were like shoes. Yeah. Oh, like, like dress sho- shoes? Yeah, they looked like shoes. Like that's all <laughs> oh, that's all people had back then. Like, right. The shoes they ran in. Yeah. Like look at the image of them. Like look. Oh my god. It's like, it's it like a wingtip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it looks like it fucking barely fits him. Jim Thorpe, legendary Native American athlete, had his shoes stolen just before he was about to compete in the Olympics. He found a mismatched pair of shoes in the trash can and went on to win a gold medal wearing them. He was also the first Native American to win a gold medal for the United States. Wow. Let's show a picture of his face. <laughs> like, that is a hard man. Yeah. That's a guy who's not going to get stopped by a fucking pair of shoes. God. You know? He should have played Batman. <laughs> well, he's dead. Look at, look, at his, look at his shoe there. Look at the vintage shoe. Yeah. It's, who, oh, my God. That's what they ran in. It's just like a piece of leather. It looks like there's some kind of traction on the bottom. Yeah. Something, some kind of thing on the bottom, I God. guess. God. You think about just the the, the, num- the the stuff that like regular people could wear now compared to that. Oh, no. God. Everything. Oh, no. Like everybody had like one, th- one pair of pants, 
one shirt, one I sweater. Know. I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was it. Whenever they show like baseball games and you show it, they're like, wow, they really dressed back then. Mm-hmm. They wore suits and ties to the baseball game. It's all they had. Right. It wasn't casual clothes. You weren't putting on <laughs> board shorts and Well, it was also a, a big t-shirt. event. To go to something like that was a big event. There was no television. Right. right? Yeah. Did you ever see, there was a, um, a thing we watched the other day. It was when Jack Johnson fought Jim Jeffries in Reno, Nevada. And you looked out at the audience. First of all, there's no ladies there. Right. It was almost all men. Mm-hmm. And everyone was dressed in a suit with a hat on. Right. <laughs> and we yeah. were watching this. We were saying, like, imagine if you were a hat maker back then. You're like, this yeah. business is never going away. <laughs> like, know. look. Look at the audience. I know. Everyone wow. has a hat on. Well, it was probably fucking sunny as shit, right? Oh, for Fourth sure. Fourth of July in Reno. For sure. You know what changed the hat? You what? know what? You know what put it out of fashion? No. Uh, JFK. What? Yeah. What? He, when he came on the scene, he was he didn't wear a hat, and he looked so great, and he had that head of hair. Really? And that changed the fashion, and yeah, hats fell out of favor. No kidding. After Kennedy, yeah. He was the guy? Yep. No they, shit. They talk about it all the time. I love hats. I wear hats because I'm bald. Oh, look at that. The beautiful hat. I yeah. like that hat. But look at the, the image. I mean, that yeah, is that's amazing. everyone. Every single person. Everyone has a hat on. And there was etiquette and there was rules. You took your hat off when you saw a lady. You took a hat off when you went into in, inside somewhere. They all have the same kind of hat, too. Yeah, isn't that Basically. funny? Basically. All a white hat because they're all outside. Yeah, I guess so. And this yeah. was a, a famously uh, hot day. It looks it. Yeah. Cr- pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. I th- think this is the article about the football oh, team. That you're Native about. American team that rev- revolutionized football. Oh, wow. Yeah. It didn't, there wasn't even a lot of forward passing back then. I remember this, I think it's the coach, Carlisle Indian School, 1879. Yeah. Right. And that had to do with Pop Warner, too. That's mm-hmm. a big guy in the uh, uh-huh. history of football. It's a whole long thing. But what does it have to do with uh, the military? There was a different story well, about— Well, yeah, so then that's the other part of where I thought, like, you're maybe mixing two things up. There's, like, a history of just the strategy of football as, like, an Army, Navy. It was a big thing back, like, they would compete to do, like, strategies and just mm. have stuff to do in the off off time. Here, listen to this. Pratt knew that nothing could stop the westward expansion of whites— and he knew the Native American way of life was coming to an end, fearing that Native Americans might actually die out. Pratt opened up the Carlisle School to save them from extinction. Oh, yeah. The idea was to teach Native American youth how to survive in this strange new world. Wow. Of course, Pratt wasn't interested in preserving their culture. After convincing parents to send their children to Pennsylvania, Pratt gave his students haircuts, instructed them in English, and ordered them to dress as white people. After all, his motto was, kill the Indian, save the man. Wow, Wow, that's crazy. 